Hi, I'm Allie. I'm Nick. And this is the But Have You Tried Bookshelf. This is, I have such a great time every time we do the do bookshelf. You? Okay. I just like hoard thoughts of like yeah. what I'm going to talk about all yeah. month. And yeah. then I forget most of them. Mm -hmm. But it's still a great time. <laughs> yeah, it's actually ruining our relationship, I think, because. <laughs> we can't I, talk about I anything. Know. I go to tell you about a movie or show that I watch or something. Like, and I'm like, ah, oh, no. Don't you dare. No, no, not now. But this is the time. This, this is, is the, the time, time where we can just let it all out. So. What have you been up to? Oh, what what haven't I been up to, Allie? I've <laughs> I've been all over the place. One thing I can't tell you about is that uh, I did rewatch the Indiana Jones trilogy in preparation for okay. your upcoming assignment of Indiana Jones. So I, I rewatched them myself. I watched the first one. You did, okay? Well, uh, yeah, I was I was like mention I mentioned it to a couple of my friends. I was like, oh, well, you know, we're having okay. movie night. I need to watch Indiana Jones. Yes. I feel like this could work out. And my one friend was like, yeah, I love Indiana Jones. That's and I was like, why is this the first time I'm hearing about that's this? That's the normal response to someone suggesting Indiana Jones. It so. was a little bit of a shock, I have to say. Okay. But well, I'll say nothing about my reactions yeah, to the movie. tight-lipped. I don't want to hear it. It came into my eyeballs, and that's all you need to know. Okay. I still have to do Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and, of course, Dial of Destiny, which is coming out. And I'm excited. Uh, and then that's all we'll talk about with that. But I have watched other movies. I watched Across the Spider-Verse. I also watched. Across is that the what it's called? I said it yes. out loud and it felt wrong. Okay. It is it Spider Man. Is right. Well, I think colon, it's weird across the Spider Verse because the first one was into into the Spider Verse, and so it's like we've gotten so used to saying that into that anything yeah. else feels weird. Yes. Maybe? Yes. I agree. But yes, I agree. Across the Spider Verse. Across the Spider Verse, and then the final is Beyond, right? Beyond the Spider Verse. I think that's right. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to. What else could you call I it? I know. All and right. More well, Spider Verse. Did you like it? I did like it. Yeah. Okay. I really enjoyed it. I thought it lived up to my expectations, okay. which after the first one were decently high, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I think that you gave me a pretty pivotal piece of information in telling me that it was a part one because I think that I would have been... Because it is it is a part one in the extreme. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's. I'm glad that the next movie's coming out in less than a year because that, that I think is maybe my one complaint about it is that even going in knowing that we're we're like the the middle entry in a trilogy i still felt like i could have used a little bit more of a final act a little bit more mm -hmm. of a like climax and i i wasn't satisfied with that that's the one that's the one negative i have to say about it that's fair yeah i did not know it was a part one going in cuz i guess okay. i like don't actually really watch trailers sure. or like pay attention to discourse uh -huh. before things come out yeah and I thought I did somehow, but apparently I don't. This isn't <laughs> the first time this has happened. Where I've been like, wait a second. I didn't What's know about happening? that. Yeah. So it got, it was like, to the, got to the end and was all like, oh, to be continued or whatever. And I was kind of like, oh, and I was like, all right. But I guess like, I was a little bit like, well, that's annoying. But I wasn't, I wasn't too thrown by it, okay. I guess. Because I felt like the final moment where it's kind of like a, we're getting ready to go for it. I was like, yeah. all right, well, we can all see that this is going places that will be good and positive so yeah. i guess that's good no enough. i agree i think it was smart that they didn't overplay like we didn't get spider ham we didn't get spider-man noir mm -hmm. like we didn't get the people that they went so heavy on in the first one and i think that's cool because it gives them the opportunity to sort of like come back in the third one which right. i hope is is what's going to happen if i had like a magic wand to go in and, and change it to be a little bit more to my liking i think i would have extended the gwen section in the beginning and got a little bit more into that that's and fair. maybe cut down a little bit on that chase. That chase was long. That's fair. It was a long chase. But yeah. I still I still <laughs> liked it. I'm my wife wherever she is now is mad that I was as negative as I was about it just now. You know what else? We got to be careful on these topics we picked because my response to Pride and Prejudice and Jane Austen uh -huh. almost ruined my marriage. It was, oh, uh, no. it was not good. Uh yeah. I mean, I thought you were fairly positive about Thank all things you. considered. But I think But not enough. I think the I think the sticking point was that I at one point compared it to Beverly Hills 90210, which is not exactly what happened. What I said was I was primed to like romantic intrigue okay, because okay. of Beverly Hills 90210. This is an not important not that distinction. they're the same. Let the record show. Not that they're the same. So it's that's funny. all. All right, so I guess we'll, we'll be careful what we say from yeah. here on out. Yeah, we do. We have to be careful. I watched one other movie. What was it? <laughs> and that was Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Oh. How do you... <laughs> do you have any feelings about the Transformers films, Allie? Um, have you seen any Transformers films? I haven't seen films? them. Okay. My general that's attitude is kind of like, safe. what? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Okay, so here it's the thing. I'm a child of the 80s, so like growing up, Transformers was 
everywhere. I was never like huge into the Transformers. I was much more in Super Friends, but like I know them, I appreciate them. I liked the first movie. I have seen all of the Transformers movies and I don't know why because I generally don't really care for them. Mm. But it's I just always, habit. Yes, it's like I always want to like them. You know, I'm always mm-hmm. like maybe this is the one and so I keep going. The Marky Mark ones were really rough. Uh, Bumblebee with Haley Steinfeld of Spider-Man fame was pretty solid. And this one, I think I actually liked. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think this is my favorite of the bunch. It uh, it tells a nice contained story. One of my complaints with the older Transformers movies is that it's like impo- you can't even look at it. It's like it's too much. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just it, it's just like gears fighting more gears. And it's like, I, it's too much metallic. I can't look at it this the action was cool it was easy to follow the characters didn't feel quite as interchangeable as they have in the past shia labeouf wasn't in it so that's a plus okay um so yeah i think uh i think i liked it overall yeah i went with a friend of mine who also didn't really care about the transformers but we sort of felt like if we're ever going to see the transformers movie it should probably be in a theater i guess it, so. I just I feel like it's a weird statement to be like, yeah, I don't really care about Transformers. Neither do you. Let's it's, go see the Transformers. It's movie in my theaters. blood. It's in my blood. You know, Hey, if it works. Yeah. So we also saw it in 3D, which oh. I don't know. There was also IMAX 3D showings. I think that would have killed me. Yeah. I think that would have put me on ice. This one time my family was at like a space museum. Oh, in yeah. Pittsburgh. Yep, yep. And it, it has like an Omnimax screen. Yes. I and know we tried to watch this documentary Mm -hmm. about the Hubble Space Telescope, which you think would be safe. I feel like I have seen this exact thing that you're talking about, only mine was in Salt Lake City, Utah with my little sister. So for those of our listeners who have not experienced the Omnimax screen, (laughs) who who don't have this trauma, it's like this enormous screen that's like this bowl over you. Yes. Okay? It's like IMAX on steroids. It is. Yeah. And... I have to say, watching that Hubble Space Telescope movie was one of the most (laughs) terrifying experiences of my entire life. Yeah. I was just like plastered against my seat, feeling like I was going to like fall Mm -hmm. into it. Mm. And my brothers, who were small at the time, were both like falling their eyes out in the back. That's a lot. (laughs) It's a lot. It was a rough time. I can't talk about IMAX without mentioning the time in high school I went to see Beauty and the Beast, the cartoon, and it really, I can't believe I didn't throw up. It was too much. Oh my gosh. That would be so colorful. It was. And like the, it was the checkered floor. There's a scene where they're like, I think it's in the kitchen or something, but there's a whole sequence on this checkered floor. And I was just like, I can't, no, can't, My I can't get through this. Are you watching movies? Not a ton, other than Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones yep. and Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah. I did watch a movie with my family called The Wish Dragon. Okay. It's an animated movie. All right. And, New, old? Um, That sounds like an old title. I don't think it's extremely old, but it's not new. Okay. The Wish Dragon. It's one that I saw on Netflix like a couple years ago, and okay. I was like, wow, this looks great. Let's watch it. And okay. my brothers were like, no, we don't want to watch that ever. Huh. And 2021, Jackie Chan. Are we talking about the same thing? Animated fish? It is animated. No, it's a, it looks like a fish, but it's it's a big pink dragon. It's a big pink dragon, yeah. With Jackie Chan. Okay, that sure. That must be it. I'm with you now. But we recently instituted this new thing for our movie nights where we're taking turns picking the oh, movie. Oh, okay. So I was like, well, now I have all You're the gonna power. You're going to use your power. My yeah. name comes first in the alphabet, and this is the movie that I'm choosing. Yeah. So we watched this, and it's about a... Um, wish dragon. A wish dragon. <laughs> But it's about this boy who, I think he's, like, supposed to be young college age. Okay. And um, he had this close friend when he was little. They, like, played together and had a ton of fun. We're both kind of outcasts otherwise. But okay. she moved away, and they kind of lost, lost touch. touch. Okay. And so he is trying to find a way to, like, reconnect their friendship. Okay. He finds this magical teapot with a wish dragon. And the wish dragon is like, you want gold, right? And he's like, no, you're supposed to help me reconnect with my friend. Is the dragon in a teapot? Yeah, he comes out of the teapot and gets really big. Is it a giant? Okay, so it's not like a giant teapot. It's like a it's a regular like a genie teapot. and a lamp kind of situation. Yes, it's Open very much like that. Okay, all right. So it was pretty good. I okay. enjoyed it a lot. All right, I have never heard of this in my whole entire life. Yeah, but I good, feel oh, like Constance Wu. Yeah, that's a good cast. Right. I well. feel like other than seeing it that one time, like pop up on Netflix, and yeah. then watching it the other night, I like never seen or heard yeah. anything about it. Yeah. And I don't understand how or why that happened. It's news to me. Constance Wu, I love from uh, Fresh Off the Boat. Did you ever watch Fresh Off the Boat? I've seen a bunch of clips that I think are it's hilarious, but I haven't watched it. It's watched very it. funny. I, we have a lot of the DVDs here in the collection. So That's if you good still to have know. a DVD player, lock I'll use and Caleb's load, PlayStation. Lock and load. Okay. Do we do we want to keep with the watching and talk shows? Sure, let's do it. 
Okay. What are you watching? Oh, what am I watching? Uh, Well, my wife and I just finished Never Have I Ever on Netflix. Have you watched that? Um, I haven't. I've seen a lot of things about it, but I haven't watched it. I love it so much. Part of it maybe is because the first season dropped April of 2020. So it was like... The just timing. as just as the sun is being blotted out, uh, <laughs> this show comes, and I'm a terrible binger. I can do a little more with comedy, but I, my wife and I watched all ten episodes of the first season. Like, boom! Just we stayed up super late and just watched it all. And so it's four seasons. It covers like high school, and this was the final season. It's like graduation and you know getting set in college and everything. Uh, and it really stuck the landing in a way that I wasn't sure that it could do. Because a lot of it, you know, is a love triangle that's kind of central in mm. it. I don't think that's really the point, but that's kind of the, th- the thing that sort of drives each season, like where things are going. You'd think it would get old, and it really doesn't. That's impressive. So I think the writing is great. I think, you know, the, the acting in it is great. And it's just, it's a really good time. I think you would enjoy it. I have kind of had it like in the back of my mind for a yeah. while, so maybe. maybe and now it's complete, it so out. you could just binge it. You got that's always nice. It's, it's four ten episode seasons. See, I love binging, but I also always feel like a little sick after a big binge Same. session. Same, I can't you know? do it. I know it's like it's like when you eat too much cake all at once. Yeah. It's like, well, this is, was amazing, but also now but, I feel horrible. Yeah, I know the feeling. It's really a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that that's the uh, that's the sitcom. I, well, it's not really a sitcom, is it? Do you still say I sitcom? Like is that still a thing? It fe- seems sure. like diminutive it seems somehow. It seems like you're it saying it does feel like, like a little bit of like a. Mm, it's just but a I sitcom. Don't, I don't feel like it. All right. Needs to. Well, it was a situation and it was comedic. Okay. So there we go. There we go. You watching any funny shows like that? We just finished the final season of Mrs. Maisel. All oh, right. Okay. Which. I thought was pretty good, yeah. But I think they needed just like one more episode. Uh, that's like rough. they mostly wrapped everything up, but I think it just needed a tiny bit more just breathing a little, room. Yeah. Okay. All so, right. So, but I mean, I enjoyed it, and I, I thought I was nervous about how they were going to wrap it up because it was like final season, but yeah. not feeling very final seasony. But I feel like they did a pretty good job. But yeah, I just think it needed a tiny mm. bit more time. Okay. We just started a show. It's on Apple called The Crowded Room, and it's Tom Holland and Amanda Seyfried. Oh. And we watched two episodes, and we're still kind of like figuring it out. She is a, a psychologist, I think, working with the police, interviewing Tom Holland. And so a lot of it is told in flashbacks. You're kind of figuring out what is going on with Tom Holland's character. And it's, it's one of those, like, something's not right. Right. And uh, my wife, I think she's correct pretty early on was like oh it's this i'm not gonna tell you what it is because i would spoil it i wish she hadn't said it to me (laughs) but uh no it's good it's interesting it's interesting i i'm only a couple episodes in but i but i'm really uh i'm i'm liking it so far so that's good you got a serious thing on the docket caleb and i recently started watching superman and lois (gasps) i love superman and lois it's so good they just renewed it for season four and everyone has been like superman and lois is great and ali you would like it especially because of lois lane and she's She's very good in it yeah yeah and so we've watched uh, a handful of episodes so far yeah there was one the other night where we're like okay we'll watch one i got to the end and i was like well why not we could keep going let it ride so I've been enjoying it a lot so far. I think the casting is really good. I do too. I think Lois Lane is great, she which is. is really all she I is. expect ever. So yeah, yeah. When they started showing up on Supergirl, I think Superman, I think, came into Supergirl in like season two, and the second he showed up, I was like, "This is great. This is the perfect Superman. I love it." It's a real horse race for my favorite Superman, but like, it might be him. Tyler Hoechlin is his name, and he is just. Uh, he manages to do like the strength and the power without being like broody and mean. He's still like positive and funny and seems like a real person. And it's maybe the best representation of Superman ever. Like Brandon Routh and Superman Returns, also really great. But yeah, it's right up there. So you think you're going to stick with it? I think so. Yeah, I'm enjoying okay. it a lot. All right. And I also appreciate that I feel like sometimes in adaptations that have Superman and Lois, yeah. there can be a lot of conflict in their relationship. Yeah. Partly because Lois is just like really intense, yeah. which is fair. Mm-hmm. And partly because there's the whole, you know, like powers and everything. And I feel like, like, it's not that there's not any conflict because that's normal sure. and good. Sure. But I feel like it feels very much like they've settled into their yeah into their dynamic yeah. which is really fun that's another thing that's really unique about it too because like i can't think of another uh, outside of the comics where you have a superman and lois who are like a set established couple and have right. been for like 
decades at this point yeah. or 15 years at least right cool well i'm glad you're liking it you'll have to keep me updated I will do on that. your process but you can't tell me when we're not recording obviously of course so, yeah, not. i don't want to hear it I'll uh, open my mouth and just like clamp my hand yeah over you it. can't do it we have those dvds in the collection too so okay. if you're local you can check them out here uh, I was excited they renewed it, the whole CW being sold and all their shows being canceled. Mm-hmm. I thought, surely Superman is dead. But no, they're going to let it go. Superman lives another day. They did cancel Gotham Knights, which uh, is a show that I've been watching also on the CW that is about the murder of Batman's been murdered and his adopted son and this like group of teens, basically. I get framed for it and they're trying to like prove that they're not killers. That's that's the bottom line. Makes uh, sense. And it's decent, you know, like I, I would keep watching it. If they renewed it, I would watch more. But as soon as it started, I was like, no way we'll just make it through mm-hmm. a second season. So too bad. I also just started watching Star Wars droids. Oh, for the, you know, Star Wars droids. At all? I don't. This is a cartoon from the 80s that was like right on the heels of Return of the Jedi. Uh, College Buddy and I, we do this show together where we we watched all the Ewoks cartoons and we finished them. So we were like, well, now we got to do droids. And so I watch it and it's weird. Oh. Because R2-D2 and C-3PO are not the stars of that show. It's like they bring in people and it's like, these are the stars. And R2-D2 and C-3PO are like the plucky like sidekicks. And it's weird when that's what the whole show is. Huh. So well, and I don't like, think I'm going to be happy. Are the main characters people or are they other droids? No, they're people. That's weird. Yeah. Because I feel like, like if droids is in the name, right. droids should be. I know. That's what I'm saying. Just, just What the heck? It's like you wrote the show. Just write a show where R2 and C-3PO can be the leads. Just it's like a, a buddy cup. 80s Star Wars. Both the Ewoks and droids are just, it's madness. Oh my goodness. Because it's at a time when like Star Wars is done. Nobody cares about Star Wars. So nobody's really like. Thinking it through. Yeah. Nobody's like, we got to make this the best. You know, it's just kind of yeah, like, we I got this property. Fair. Let's toss out some cartoons. And oh it's, my goodness. It's not great. But is that it for your TV? Yes. Do you have anything else? Not TV wise. No. All right. Well, then let's talk books. <laughs> let's do it. What have you been reading? Uh, now, that, okay. now that you're no longer, you know, burdened with Jane Austen. I, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a burden. Okay. Okay. Don't. You're going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm starting problems Please over don't, here. Please don't. Uh, I read a book called She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lippincott and Allison Derrick. This was a Pride Month book club that we're doing here at the library. Uh, you can listen to the whole discussion over on the House Things feed. But this was the epitome of it was all right Uh, you know there's no real tension in it you know and it's sort of like oh this this girl wants to be with her and this girl wants to be with her but it's not working out so these two are going to kind of band together and help each other get and like obviously you know it's going to happen of course of course you know it's going to happen and so that's the thing there's never really a moment where you think maybe it'll go in this direction or maybe it'll go in this direction it's just going to go in the direction that it goes and that's all it does so all right. it's a dual narrative and part of the shtick is that the two, you know, the two girls who are trying to help each other get the others uh, are supposed to be like really different. But the writing really is not varied at all. Mm, that's unfortunate. The way they talk, uh, they both have like weird issues with their mom. So it's like this is a Molly chapter and this is an Alex chapter and it they don't feel different enough, mm, you know. That's unfortunate. And so there's really just not a lot of uh, not a lot to keep you going. This is not a book that I don't... I don't think I would have powered through if it was not for the book club. The book club. So. I'm pretty sure I've read a different a different YA book that has like almost that exact same plot. Yeah. Well, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. With a little fake dating thrown in. Okay. Some fake dating. Yeah. Well, this they went on fake dates to, okay, prep, okay. to prep Alex to get Cora was the cool girl that she oh, wanted. Okay. Uh, so there is some fake dating in this as well. It's, you know, it's harmless. It's fine. It's fun. It's cute. But it's just doesn't really there wasn't enough there to really like push me through the story Unfortunate. i wasn't rooting for anyone to get together you know and that's a pretty crucial you need to have that what about you um, dorothy sayers dorothy sayers caleb <laughs> and i are still working on half his carcass okay. all right it's like in the mornings we like have breakfast and then we usually have like some of yeah. our tea left over yeah, yeah. so we'll go sit on the couch with our tea yeah. and i have to like only sit on the side of the couch with the end table because i've knocked over cups of tea on the mm, ground one mm-hmm, too many times mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I'll be like crocheting and Caleb's reading and I'm like, oh no, I have to go to work. Yep. So yeah, that's the Dorothy L. Sayers situation. Okay. Also reading a series that's like a boarding school mystery. Okay. The series is, well, the first is truly devious and I think that's what the whole series is kind okay. of called. This is not a witch boarding school though. No, this okay. one is that's not a, a witch boarding school. Okay. No witches here. All right. This is by Maureen Johnson and you know, there's this cold case at the school and the main character's really into like true crime and all that. And so she goes to the school kind of with the idea to solve the mystery. Okay. 
I've really been enjoying them, but I was surprised that the first one kind of ended on a cliffhanger. Mm, okay. I was like, well, that's not what you don't really okay. expect from a mystery. Usually at the end, everything is kind of like yeah. resolved. So I guess I was a little thrown by that because she like sort of solved a, another smaller mystery, but okay. there were still a lot of unresolved threads. Got it. Got it. And then the second one just like straight up ended on a total cliffhanger. Wow. Cliffhanger. But luckily I was here and I like grabbed you the next, grab one, the next so. one. Yeah. So I'm on the third one and powering through and really enjoying them. So okay. for those who want mysteries, especially the boarding school variety, I definitely recommend. That's the one to go with. I have been putting off reading Dark Knight's Metal, which is a DC Comics uh, kind of a Justice league crossover. And there was Dark Knight's Metal and then there was Dark Knight's Death Metal. And oh. then that was kind of like a uh, sort of a, it was going to be like a reboot of the DC universe. It didn't really happen, but it leads into this series called uh, future state where it's like, here's a different, a new Superman. Here's a new Batman. Here's a new wonder woman. And that's what I really wanted to read. I wanted to read the future state mm. stuff, but I was like, I got to read dark Knights metal and stupid dark Knights death metal. And I did, and they were stupid. So I made you the right, just, you should have just skipped them. I should have honestly, cause I read future state Batman. That's the first one I've read. And we had Future State Suicide Squad here in the collection. So I'm going to read that one next. But I would have been fine just jumping right to Batman. So oh well. I wasted uh, I wasted a lot of time. So I finished all that stuff. I'm currently reading Tin Man by Justin Madsen, which I got from your new YA graphic oh, novel yeah. collection. And it's good. It's cool. Awesome. I like it. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Yeah. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I love a good Wizard of Oz twist. And yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's uh, I'm kind of figuring out, like, where are we? Like, is this Oz? Are we going to Oz? Right. Is Oz a part of it? And so, like, it's doing a nice job of, of layering in bits of the story and things that are familiar. Like, if you know, like, Oz lore, which weirdly I do because I've read all of the Bomb books and several of the Ruth Plumley Johnson books as well. That does seem like something you would know somehow. <laughs> Thank you. Like, if someone was like, who's someone in your life that you think yeah. would know a weird amount of Oz lore? I don't know. Definitely Nick Gunning. Here it is. Here it is. Have you read any of the Oz books? I don't think I have. Do you know what my favorite thing about the Oz books is? And this is like a weird little in-joke when you consider when they were written. The first book was illustrated by, I don't even remember who, but it was. A, it looks different. Like okay. it looks decidedly different from all the rest of the books. So in a later book, when uh, Dorothy and everybody goes back to this place where the action in the first book took place, they see a statue of Dorothy that was made in the first book. And the statue looks like the illustrations from the first book. And everybody's like, that doesn't look like Dorothy at all. And That's it's really just like, funny. you only get that joke if you read the first book like That's 10 years ago. That's a nice little ago. meta joke. I know. But isn't that kind of like a, that seems unusual for the 30s. You I, know what yeah, I mean? It just I feel seems, like that feels a little Yeah, it's kind of like prescient. an inside baseball sort of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I like that a lot. That's really but cool. anyway, Tin Man by Justin Matson. You can check it out when I'm done. All right. Because I'm, I'm reading it now. I'm also reading I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, which is uh, quite a title. Yeah, it, it really is. It was uh, Kate Elliott who works here at the library in the auditorium in the gallery. This was her first staff pick. This was the one where she was like, that's the one. So I put a hold on it and my hold finally just came in. So I'm reading. It's interesting so far. I don't think I've gotten to like the meat of it yet. That makes sense. But I like I like the writing. What are you are you currently reading? Just the Dorothy Sayers? Um, you got Dorothy Sayers else? and yes. my current audiobook, which is Wondersmith, which is the second book in the Morgan Crow series. Okay. And this is like very much the uh, it has like a Harry Potter feel in okay. its like main character who's in the regular world, which isn't quite the same as our regular world, but regardless, yeah. goes to a different magical world okay. and experiences like a school kind of thing and a bunch of trials and tests and okay. fantastical things they never could have expected. It does sound Harry Potter-esque. It has that vibe, but it's very fun. The main character, I feel like, is kind of kind of a different main character. She's a little like, I hesitate to use the word dour, but like she very much likes black and is kind of mm. like... Okay. A little no nonsense. That I th- I feel like that can that can create a really fun dynamic. Yeah. But and the audiobook is just it's a really good read okay. of it. So I'm enjoying that a lot. Is this spinning out of your love of Wednesday? Is that how this No, I read the first life? one okay. first, like a long time ago before okay. I watched Wednesday. But it was recommended to me by Brand Brothers. And okay. Then I wasn't Man, able. I know your siblings do write by you with these book recommendations. They really do. Good they know them. what I like. Good for them. So, but I wasn't able to like get the audiobook of the second one, and I tried to just read the physical book, but I'd listen to the Can't first one, and I was yeah. like, oh, I don't like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So I had to wait until I was able to get the audiobook. Okay, but you you succeeded. I did, and okay. it does have a little bit of a Wednesday vibe. All I feel right. like those who like Wednesday might yeah. like it. Okay. Do you have other things up your sleeve, bookwise? I 
not book wise, but I have uh, I have started an endeavor. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I was feeling like I was looking at like social media and scrolling my phone too much, you know, as you Don't do, we all? as you do. <laughs> Uh, and I was like, I got to find some like other, like some little like game or some like mm-hmm. cool, like little thing to do in there. So I was looking up options and uh, I came across Duolingo, which I know you've used before. Indeed. Right. And uh, so it's a, it's a language app and there's a free mode that's that's pretty good. Honestly, the free version is pretty solid. And it's very like you, you described it as a very gamified approach. Mm-hmm. And that's absolutely true. It's such a satisfying, like you get something right and it's like, I and know. I'm like, yes, it I've gives you the little it. gems and everything. So that's right. The gems. So I decided like, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pick a language <laughs> and oh I settled boy. on Portuguese. Okay. Okay. I settled on Portuguese because like, you know, I took Spanish in high school and everything. I haven't like touched it in a long time and I just wanted to do something like I didn't trust myself to do something like reasonable, like Spanish. I felt like I would just sort of like fall away from it. So I was looking That's at fair. what other languages are really widely spoken and also decently like matches like syntax and, oh, right. uh, you know, like grammatical structure to English and Portuguese kept coming up and I was like, let's do it. <laughs> let's roll these dice. Uh, so I've been learning Portuguese. How's it been going? I think it's been going pretty well. I think it's a pretty good way in because it's very intuitive in the way it kind of introduces you to new concepts and simple things like plurals and and conjugated verbs and things where if you're learning it in a traditional way in a textbook or something like that, that that is what can kind of kill you. It really because can. Because it's boring. You it's know? boring. Like, it's and so sometimes boring. it's like, here's this information. Just put it in your brain. Right. And I'm like, yeah. uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I've appreciated about this so much because so many times, never did they say, well, this is what it looks like when you're talking in the third person. It, right. it just kind of keeps like it tossing it happens. in there. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, well, it must be that one. And so... I do. I think it's been going pretty well. I'm on a 22 day streak. Excellent. Which is another thing. I can't break the streak. I know the streak. I cannot is break really, the streak. It it makes you keep going. Yeah. I'm not, wait. Let me see. Let me oh, see what streak. You, I'm oh, on are you right doing now. it? Okay. Yes. We need to connect as friends on, okay, on okay. Duolingo. Yeah. I will. I will search right. for you. Uh, my wife and son also started doing it, but they are doing Spanish, which like good for them because it is more practical. Right. Okay. 157 days. Whoa. Straight. Look at that. I started, I started, because I'd done it a while ago. Yeah. And I started doing it again around New Year's this year. Yeah. Like, not right at New Year's. It yeah. wasn't like a New Year's resolution, just like a, a day or so before New Year's. Yeah. I was like, huh, it's been a while since I've done this. Yeah. Well, part of the reason why I thought foreign language was because of you, because you were you were listening to Prisoner of Azkaban yes. in Spanish to like get used to it again. So I ordered some Portuguese children's books through Interlibrary Loan, and we actually have a really good world language section here we at the do. library. Yeah. Not to keep promoting the library, but <laughs> we're here of, to help it's you kind guys. Of our Come job, on, <laughs> you know. uh, and we do actually have some Portuguese stuff in there too. So I'm going to check that out. Okay, have you ever experienced yet the Friends Quests? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Those are so motivating because anytime it's like aha, uh-huh, you know, your friend yeah. so-and-so is doing a friend's quest with you. Don't let them down. I'm like, well, I can't. You can't. I know. Yeah, so my wife so I'm, my wife is doing it, my son, and so we're all kind of like in the same little thing, and so we keep like nudging each other, and it's, uh, it's very wholesome. It is it's wholesome. Very, it's very it's, wholesome. It's a wholesome community. But yeah, so, you know, learning Portuguese. Why not? Excellent. Why not? I support this. I got a little ahead of the game, and I was looking for like comic books and easy things to read on eBay, and I bought uh, Superman Brainiac, which is a comic I read years ago and loved, but in Portuguese. So one day, my one goal day. is to read Superman I Brainiac. I think that's a good goal. In Portuguese. And on my stairs right now through Interlibrary Loan, I have Oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss in Portuguese. In Portuguese? That's right. That sounds achievable. That is right. Yeah, I think so. I was looking through it and I was like, yeah, I know a bunch of these words. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, do you have any non-media related non-media things that you're doing things. at the moment? I finished a couple crochet projects. Yeah, you did. I made a bag uh, Wait, out you, of granny you were, squares. You were knitting before. I was knitting, but then... You switched gears. I switched gears. Okay. Well, partly because I had a couple things I had in mind that I yeah. wanted to make that are easier to crochet than to knit. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well... I enjoy knitting more, but like anything that's like three dimensional, like an animal, yeah, I find it easier to crochet it, okay, than to knit it. Interesting. Like you can, but it's just a lot more complicated. Yeah. But I made this bag partly because I wanted to like try making these like squares with okay. like flowers in okay. them, okay. Mm-hmm. And I never had, so I was like, well, might as well just make like eighteen of them and turn them you into a bag. You might as well, yeah. There's no reason not to. So, and I also made a white kind of lace collar, okay, which is <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
the like final episode of Wednesday, she wears this white lace oh, collar. Oh, okay. And I was rewatching it with friends, and I was like, I, I could totally I make that. that. Collar, sure. And we all know about my obsession with Wednesday. Yeah. So I now have this collar. Okay. I'll wear it to work at some point. So I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure you'll yeah. see it. We'll snap a picture. For sure. That's so, exciting. My wife is basically like a replicator from Star Trek. I'll just be like, you know, my iPad, I really could use a, a cover for it. And she's just like, whoosh. And now I have this great incredible. little cover. It's got a flap. It's got a button. It's great. I had this, I had a bookmark and I wanted just, I just wanted yarn to come out of the top of the bookmark so it didn't slide down into the pages. Right. She hands it to me and it's this like <laughs> intricately woven, like knit thick strap That's on so this cool. uh, bookmark. So yeah ask and it and it materializes <laughs> it shall be so that's right that's all <laughs> there is to it okay anything else for the good of but have you tried you're really giving it some thought i'm, I, I'm I trying to that. dig deep i, I want to make sure i'm not missing anything yeah. i don't i don't think nothing, there's anything nothing after all that build up there was there was nothing i got my hammock out for the first time this year <gasps> right well that's yeah so that's exciting and you found some trees to i did hook it to it's so very hard to find trees that are yeah. close enough together but i did succeed okay but i think i think that's the only other thing i have okay. going on all right Just well the hammock life once again people needed to know that so I'm it's really important <laughs> I'm okay glad. <laughs> i'm glad that you got it out there yeah all right well as listeners might recall ali is currently assigned the full indiana jones saga Yes. So the four existing movies. It sounds movies so much more intense when you say saga. the Dial of Destiny. Well, you've got four more movies yeah, to true, go. That's true. You got to pound through it. So in two weeks, we'll be back here, and you, listeners, and I will find out at the same time if Allie likes Indiana Jones or if she has a heart of stone. We'll find out. We don't know. We'll find out which one is true. Have you given thought to? The old switcheroo, like what you're going to assign me when we finish Indiana Jones. I haven't, but I need to. You do. It's, you got two coming weeks. Up. You got two weeks. I have a list that I'm keeping. I'm like, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. But I've given you two 80s classics in a row, so I got to pivot mm-hmm. next time I come around. I'll ha- I do have a list somewhere, so I'll have to check it and okay. see if there's see if there's any winners check in. there. All right. Well, remember, as always, you can stop into the library and check out the actual physical, real. But have you tried Bookshelf, which has the things that we've been talking about on that you can check out here if you're local. And uh, again, two weeks, Indiana Jones. Absolutely. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook at David A. Howe Public Library, at Twitter, D.A. Howe Library, Tumblr, But Have You Tried. And, you know, rate and subscribe and do all that fun stuff. I hated that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just got to do what know, you got to do. I know. Do. You're right. You're right. We got to keep the lights on here. Okay. Well, I guess that's it then. All right. See you later. Okay. 